What's going on guys? I'm Nick the Tutor and I'm back again today with a topic that is near and dear to my heart. Something that I really, really love and that is ACT science. I get this question all the time, Nick, what are the best strategies for ACT science? How do I improve my science score? I don't really get it. What do I do? In this video, I'm going to answer all those questions and I'm going to explain to you what the deal is with ACT science, how you can approach it, and how basically you can achieve success on this section. It's a little bit quirky, as you probably realize, it's a mixture of reading and science and charts and graphs. So because of that, I'm going to get into the video and we can discuss what it's all about, so let's go. All right, let's get the basics out of the way. On ACT Science, you're gonna have either six or seven passages, and you're going to have 40 questions. You're going to have 35 minutes to complete those 40 questions. So if you break that down on a passage by passage basis, if there's six passages, you're going to have five minutes and 50 seconds to complete them. If there happens to be seven passages, you're going to have five minutes per passage to complete them. This is the most important part of this. You have to understand the timing structure of the test. Now. The next thing you're gonna be faced with is a lot of graphs and charts. You wanna make sure that you're looking at the correct diagram, graph, or chart. The biggest mistake students make on this part of the test is they simply look at diagram two instead of diagram one, or graph two instead of graph one. You have to make sure that you have all of those things figured out and you highlight or underline, because you can't highlight, but underline or circle things on the test to make sure that you're looking in the right direction. Now, that said, the other big mistake students make is incorrect reading of graphs. Now, how do they do that? Students typically brush over the axes of the graphs, So the X axis and Y axis will be labeled. Sometimes they even throw in a double X axis to make you even more confused. Under those circumstances, it's extremely, extremely important that you as the student know what each axis is labeled as so you can correctly answer the question and correctly analyze the graph. That's the biggest mistake students make. They just misread graphs by not reading the axes and by not reading the key, which will show you further information about what the graph says. It's pretty much that simple. If you can do that, you can effectively increase your graph reading ability and that therefore effectively increasing your score by getting more questions right. So another key fact about ACT science that you should know in the beginning before getting into the strategy of this video is that the ACT science is present only on the ACT and not on the SAT. Yes, does the SAT have things in the context of science? Sure. But does the SAT actually have a science section? No. Now, the second thing I want to say on that point, and I'm going to talk more about this later in terms of study habits and content, but you do not need to break open your biology, chemistry, physics books, earth science, whatever. Do not crack them open. It's not relevant. You need to practice with the test material as that is the most important way to understand the science. The second thing you need to do after that would be to understand the strategy, which we'll talk about later in this video. So students ask me all the time, Nick, what is ACT science all about? How can I attack it? How can I just get it better? And the answer is very simple. You need to understand that there are three types of passages. Passage type number one, data representation. That's gonna be most of the passages. Those are going to be, excuse me, the passages relating to graphs and charts. There's gonna be very little text and there's gonna be a lot of data, right? That's why it's called data representation. On those passages, you don't wanna take that much time. You wanna keep it simple, you wanna read quickly, and then go straight into the data. Most of the questions, if not all of them, will be related to that data, so you can really get in there and get those answers. Now, there may occasionally be a question on that part of the test that does, have, that does pertain to the written portion. So you should look out for that. It's usually the last question, but maybe not. If you get stuck, you're like, I just don't understand where this answer is supposed to come from. It probably comes from the text. And that is data representation. Those typically take the least amount of time. You probably want to whiz through a data representation passage in about four to five minutes. You do not want to take the full time on that part of the test. That leads into my next type of passage, which is the research study. So in those passages, that's ones where you have, you know, study one, study two, study three, those kind of passages are a little bit different, right? You're gonna have more text, you're gonna need more time to read that text, 
and you're probably going to have more questions about experimental design and what's in the text. Now, because of that, you want to pay more attention to the text and you want to read more slowly. Now, like I was saying, that means this is just going to take more time. You simply cannot complete a uh, research study passage in the same amount of time as the average data representation passage. It's just something that you have to account for on the test. Now, what you want to look out for are things like experimental design, like I was saying. So, you know, they're, they're doing something, they're doing steps. Oftentimes they just li list them with numbers and you have to follow those steps and make sure that you are in fact, you know, going along with and understanding the study itself. When you're looking at this kind of study, you want to think about three things. What is the purpose of the study? What are the operations that they're doing? And what are the generalized outcomes of the study? If you can figure out those three things, you have a very high chance of success on any passage on the ACT, especially a research study. All right, guys, so the third type of passage is called competing researchers or competing scientists. This type of passage is the most difficult type of passage for a lot of students, not everybody. And that is because it does rely on your reading skill. And the problem is you just don't have a lot of time. So basically what you're presented with is various opinions. You could be presented with two or three or sometimes even four opinions by researchers or students. And they're talking about a scientific issue. And what they're doing is they're disagreeing on a certain outcome. So they're saying, you know, one is saying that the solar system was formulated by the Big Bang and the other researcher is proposing a different method. One researcher is saying, you know, birds learned how to fly from the tree down theory. The other is proposing the uh, floor up theory. I mean, they're, they're just proposing different theories about very common scientific issues, sometimes obscure ones. Now, why is that difficult? Well, being that you're given a very short amount of time to do the uh, these passages, when they're especially when they're seven, uh, you have basically five minutes of passage. It's really difficult to read all that and understand it in the proper amount of time. So what you have to do is allocate that time properly. So basically you're going to want to save time on some of the other passages and reallocate it to the competing researchers passage. It's just what you have to do. And if you understand that, you'll be much more successful on this part of the test. Now, besides all of what I just said, those are kind of the basic structure, basic structural things, few little basic strategies. You're gonna ask me, okay, Nick, do I need to know scientific knowledge? Do I need to know bio? Do I need to know chemistry? Do I need to know physics? The answer is no. You do not get a calculator on the science section, so you do not need scientific knowledge. Now, I just wanna preface that because I know someone's gonna put in the comments, well, Nick, you're wrong. I am wrong, actually, on that. There, there is going to be probably somewhere between one to two questions that will test you on something like cells, pH, or some other very basic uh, you know, scientific fact. Now, I'm assuming, and, and I think it's pretty clear from working with thousands of students, that most of you do know most of these issues. And even so, like I said, if it's one question, I don't know if it's necessarily worth the time to study biology, chemistry, physics. I mean, it's just, just to get one question to make sure you know that one fact, probably not the best use of your time. But that said, it is going to be on there. But like I said, I kind of just ignore that for purposes of educating students because you're just not going to need to spend a lot of time doing that. Now, let's move on to some other strategies and final points about the science. All right, so students always ask me, you know, what do you think about the science section? My conclusion, my verdict is that the science section is in fact the easiest section on the ACT. And I'll tell you why. The other sections like math and English, they require some level of knowledge, right? You need to know grammar. You need to know sentence structure. You need to know math formulas. You need to know rules, right? But on the science section, you really don't need any background knowledge. It's 100% strategy. Now, that said, the main barrier and what all of you should be doing is timing yourself. What you can do is, like I said before, time yourself for individual passages, time yourself for entire sections, and make sure that you have down the strategies that I laid out, that you understand the three types of passages, that you understand how to break down the passages by looking at the purpose, the operations, and the generalized outcomes. And beyond that, you try to understand the different question types and different different pieces of the test. If you can do that, you will surely be successful on ACT science. If you need some more help, I have something for you. We just released our first book. This is a pre-release copy. The book is available on Amazon, so you can check that out now. Great.